Hey guys, Lorena Magana here with New Filmmakers Los Angeles. Today I'm talking to directors Niles Heckman and Rick Glenn about their new film, Supervised. Let's take a look at a clip from the film. Why don't you give our viewers a brief synopsis of your film? It's a short film, sci-fi, of a dystopian near future where we're seeing operators inside a uh, RFID chip laboratory and uh, their day is going horribly wrong as the chips inside their own heads are exploding. And they have yep. discovered that there's an input signal coming in that is causing them to detonate and they are desperately fending off that signal by coding against it in the hopes that someone is on their way to rescue them. How did the two of you come up with the concept behind this film? Yeah, that's interesting. It was based around one kind of specific location that we had access to at the time. So we wrote this kind of dystopian little short sci-fi story around that specific location. And um, yeah, it kind of went from there. It kind of turned into a much bigger project than we initially thought it would. And um, we ended up having a full little cast and crew more so than we were initially thinking it was just going to be a very minimal thing, but it, of course, snowballed into a much bigger project. Niles, how did you end up working with Rick? We've worked a lot in our kind of day jobs together, and um, we primarily work in a commercial department or have in the past worked in a commercial department. And the pipeline is such that I used to do primarily pre-visualization work, which is kind of the step after storyboarding. So I would do the pre-vis work, and then Rick would do the kind of animation direction work. So my role would kind of spill into his role. There'd be like this kind of gray area between where previs ends and direction starts. So we would constantly collaborate on how many, we've collaborated on probably half a dozen projects at least prior Easily. to this point. But a lot of the work we do is very kind of directorial like work. So this is our first, this is actually our second project of kind of taking the reins together to attack something. Because on those projects we do for day job work, we typically have found that we worked really well together and uh, kind of knew, we're, we're interested in the same genre of storytelling, blah, blah, Absolutely. blah. So, yeah. yeah. The both of you have a very visual effects heavy background. Was it an easy transition for the both of you to go into writing and directing? It, I think it went very smoothly. I'd say the part mm -hmm. that we was most interesting is I've never collaborated on writing or directing with anyone. Hmm. And so I did not know that. That was, uh, that was an experiment unto itself. It's like, well, let's see how this goes. Because we let's see if we can get through it and still be friends at the end. And right. uh, I think we actually pulled that off. Yes. So uh, and came up with a film that isn't completely garbage. So that's yes. good too. Yes. And it's funny because you co-directing a project with somebody is all about compromise. It's kind of like being married, you know. So you have your ups and downs and your arguments and kind of like your back and forth. But yes, getting through it is kind of the major hurdle. And uh, you certainly, if you can get through it and make something great out of it, it's like more power to you. So. But that's the, that's the irony in independent film, the way I work, you know, we produce our own work. So yes. if I want to change in the edit, I'm going to get that change. And if I want to change in the score, I'm going to get that change. I get everything I want because I'm producing. But now I've got a co-producer. Yep. And so that's equal say. And it's like you're going to have to pick your battles very carefully. So. But the film is significantly better than it would have been had either of us helmed it by ourselves. That's what we yeah. found. So it's, yeah. it's probably you know, exponentially better then it's not just twice as good, it's 10 times as good. And what so. was also really nice was that the spreading of the load of the work was yes. like, it was such a relief. It's like, can you just handle this? It's like, yeah, okay, I can handle that right now. Good, because I'm very doing this thing. Yeah. And uh, that was marvelous. I've never had so much help yeah. before on a project. So that was nice. That's a really good point. Everything's divided by two. And then we each, roll, we each wore multiple roles, multiple hats oh, during yeah. the production. And I think there wasn't a single person in the crew that didn't do at least two or three things, at least. Yes. Some of us did like six or seven things. Whose idea was it to have that twist at the end? I don't recall who actually came up with the idea, but as soon as mm -hmm. we identified it, we knew that that's what we both loved. That was the right thing. Because there's, to give a little bit of backstory, the, the, the simple idea of the story is what we wanted to do was within this wonderful location we had, just tell a nice 
small story of basically like a DOS boot. Mm -hmm. Two guys sweating balls in a terrible situation. It's kind of got the submarine theme. Everybody's, yeah, yeah just completely drenched and it's in just stress. Intense, get in, get out, that's it. And probably at the end, everybody dies. So uh, coming up with the, uh, the, the, the second part to it is that there was a bigger idea which was going on with um, the Arab Spring was happening and the Take Wall Street. Occupant. And, yeah, Occupant. And there were a lot of things going on at the time that kind of gave this, this zeitgeist feel of people not being controlled their lives. Being at the, some puppet master was kind of driving the strings. So that was sort of a bigger idea too, is that you're inside an organization, et cetera, where really you're not in control of anything and you're not actually any more important than a piece of paper. And the narrative is that, of the film is that the the actual employees, the characters have numbers assigned to them by the corporation, but they refer to themselves as each other's names. So to the company, they're numbers. To each other, they're people, friends. So, and uh, the film has a very kind of work together theme. I mean, basically, here's a situation where everybody's being essentially killed, and the way that people get out of it is, a, is not what each individual does, but what multiple people have to do to solve the puzzle. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. Thanks for having us.